Polly and the Soft Beast, written by Abida Arshad and illustrated by Paula Minotto. This is Polly. She is a brave little girl. Her superpowers can save the world. With magic colours to change her hair, she can run fast or fly through the air. Red hair makes Polly as fast as a cheetah. Blue hair means swimming with a mermaid named Anita. White hair makes her invisible, a bit like a ghost. Green hair sends Polly flying into space where she can smell the alien's toast. But Polly had a problem. Something strange was going on. Each morning, people woke up to find their socks were gone. Every night a beast prowled the streets, looking for socks to steal. But nobody knew why he wanted socks, perhaps for a tasty sock meal. He stole little boys' spotty socks and stole from girls who wore frilly frocks. He stole the fairy's socks so small and even stole from a giant so tall. Then one night the sock beast arrived at Polly's house. He tiptoed into the garden as quiet as a mouse. He crept in slowly through the door at the back searching for socks to have for a snack. Now, which of the magic colours would Polly use? Blue, red, green or white? Which would you choose? Polly sprayed the white magic all over her hair. Now she was invisible. The sock beast couldn't see her there. Snatching Polly's favourite socks, the beast crept away, tiptoeing silently back to his cave where he liked to sleep all day. Polly whispered, I want my socks back. Then out into the dark she went where the streets were pitch black. But Polly was invisible, so she couldn't be seen. And she was so glad because the beast looked mean. Sliding down an underground tunnel, Polly landed with a thud. The beast looked back, but all he could see were stones and sloppy mud. A branch from a huge tree fell onto the beast's head. The beast looked up but couldn't see Polly. Hmm, how strange, he said. Finally the beast sat down to rest. He still couldn't see his small invisible guest. Then very slowly he took the socks off his feet to reveal the smelly ponk of old mouldy meat. The beast's feet were disgusting, scaly and rotten, with huge black spots covering the bottom. Each foot was covered in a hundred spiky thorns, yellow in colour to match his horns. Green gloop from his nails poured everywhere. In the cave, a horrible smell filled the air. So that's why the beast was always stealing, because 
his prickly feet would send people squealing. Polly looked at the beast, sad and all alone. Perhaps he just needed some socks of his own. Polly was kind, so she decided to help by making him socks so his feet couldn't be smelt. But oh no, the magic wore off and now the beast could see Polly standing in his cave as frightened as could be. The sock beast looked frightened too, but murmured a quiet hello. Polly said hello back and then quickly turned to go. The next day, Polly travelled back to the beast's cave. Without her magic powers, she still felt brave. Peeping into the cave, Polly smiled nervously at the beast, wondering if he would eat her for a breakfast feast. But instead, the sock beast whispered shyly, Please, do come in. I promise I won't eat you for my breakfast or my din. So Polly gave him the new socks and they became good friends. And the beast never stole another sock ever again. It had been a long day for Polly and she soon fell asleep, dreaming of the magic sprays and what her next adventure might be. See if you can remember which hair colour Polly needs for each power. Press the button below to subscribe, like and share. I hope you've enjoyed it. See you next time.